Okay, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this on social media, on live streams, wherever, and I've even been guilty of saying this in some cases as well, that humans can be your weakest link. And the fact is, that is sometimes true. That's not always, you know, a lie. However, there are other cases where that is not true, and humans can actually be an incredible strength. And so today in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can flip you know, an entire workforce or, you know, how you can flip non-technical people, you can flip your team, you can flip whoever and turn them from being, you know, a potential liability in cybersecurity and instead make them one of your greatest assets. And we're going to talk about all of that right here. We often get pigeonholed, uh, especially on YouTube, on the technical side of cybersecurity. However, it's not all technical skills. A lot of it is soft skills. And one of the areas that our industry has had trouble with historically is in those soft skills and communicating with human beings uh, the importance of cybersecurity. But not only that, communicating how easy it can be to actually reinforce cybersecurity. It's not all patching. It's not all vulnerability management. It's not all, you know, pen tests and all these things. A lot of it is just communicating one-on-one -on -one with another human person on the other side and saying, hey, you know, here's what we need. Here's what we need you to look out for. You know, here's what you can do. But it's not enough to be able to just tell them in nerd speak, right? You have to speak to them in plain language, whichever language it is that is native to you or that you're speaking with them. But, but you have to communicate in a form that they understand clearly not only what it is that they're looking for, but what's expected of them. Another thing that happens uh, is, you know, we often see a lot of people showing off all the shiny new toys. And that is, obviously, it's a human thing, right? You want the shiny new toys. Everyone, want, for instance, wants a Tesla. Maybe you don't want a Tesla, but whatever. We all want the shiny new thing, may, but it may not always be feasible for, you know, people to get that shiny new thing. For instance, I'm not gonna get a Tesla. I can't get a Tesla. That's fine. It, it's, it's what you really need is function over fashion. And sometimes, you know, in the industry, it can be possible for human beings to be distracted by the shiny object and not necessarily the function that needs to be obtained. And why, why do I say this is because humans can provide function. Humans can provide incredible function. After all, humans are more intelligent and more capable than computers. And, and the proof of that is computers can't feel emotion. And emotion is one of the, you know, just most intelligent things that a creature can feel, right? Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Comment below. I say all of this to say that if you're a smaller organization, it may not be feasible to get that shiny new toy. You might see other people talking about the shiny new toy and think, great, I can't get that. You might be seeing a lot of people talking about all the technical things, all the different, you know, technical chatter, and maybe you're not a technical individual. Maybe you aren't, you know, you're not working in cybersecurity. You know, you're just watching this video because you want to. Maybe you're just watching this video because you want to leave a like on it, which you should. Uh, absolutely. I want to let you know right now that it is 1000% possible for you to have a good level, a decent level of security in your environment, and it is all dependent on the people. In fact, this is such a critical element of cybersecurity that you could have all the shiny new toys. You could throw, I mean, millions and millions and millions of dollars into cybersecurity, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into cybersecurity. You'd have massive, massive teams, and none of that matters if you have an untrained user base that allows ransomware into the environment. I mean, you're probably gonna have mitigated the risk on the back end pretty effectively, but I'm just saying. The human firewall, as it's termed, is, you know, that is your first defense. If you can train the users to be able to look for malicious things in the environment, then you can make up for the fact that maybe you're lacking on the back end just because you're a smaller organization or you can't afford to hire a cybersecurity professional. Now, where does the term human firewall come from? Uh, I actually, I mean, I tried giving it a look. I have no idea who actually coined it. So let me know in the comments if you know who officially coined 
the human firewall phrase, I didn't want to like attribute it to one person mistakenly. That's why I say I have no idea. But the original person that coined it, let me know in the comments. That would be sick to know. However, it refers to the level of cyber competency that your user base has in your organization. And that can be accomplished, that can be built through training, training, and more training. But why is it so powerful? Because a, phishing, a successful phishing email can lead to ransomware. And malware that is imported into the environment can completely undermine all these expensive products that we've already talked about, the shiny new toys. Things like a malicious USB or other removable media can do the same. Maybe users are just kind of doing whatever they want on work machines and they have access to the, you know, a production environment or business environment and they are unknowingly clicking on malware online. All of these things can be negated by training the staff to be able to recognize what is okay and what's not okay. And it's really not that hard and it can be done fairly, uh, and it can be done pretty cheap. In fact, you have YouTube where you can find all kinds of other cybersecurity videos such as those on my channel that can educate users on what to look for. And in fact, if you are a small business leader or you're, you know, you work in an environment where maybe you need to build up the human firewall, comment down below on what kinds of things you want to educate your users on for free, and I'll make a video for it. That is my, you know, that is what I want to do. That's why I made this channel is to be able to give you an opportunity uh, to to increase to build that human firewall. However, that being said, you can get some phenomenal services done, and this isn't like a sponsored thing, I'm just saying, uh, but groups like Know Before provide some excellent training. There are all kinds of other you know, organizations out there that provide really, really good cybersecurity training, and they can also help simulate different things and test users on their knowledge. That's not necessarily something that I can provide <laughs> as someone on YouTube, however, that is a resource that's out there that you could utilize. And if you're watching this and you know of other resources that small businesses or individuals can use to train their user base, you know, comment down below. Now, what happens if you build up the human firewall? You're, you have your first line of defense built up. And now the, the thing that a lot of people online are saying is the weakest link in cybersecurity now becomes one of your strongest links. And now the, you know, the weaker link it is the lack of shiny new toys. However, you can get you can build that up on the back end and knowing that you have a strong and reliable user base that's keeping you secure. Now with that, let me know down in the comments if this was helpful and if it was helpful, please do consider hitting that like button. It really helps this video with the algorithm and it helps it get out and, and find people that you know could use this kind of advice. And with all of that, I will see you all next time. See ya.